Hi there. Um, many of you guys will know that around about last Christmas I was in the market for a new antenna. Uh, I eventually took the plunge and purchased a Benito Bonnie Whip. Um, it was about £100, which is getting on for about a third of what you would pay for something like a Wellbrook Loop ALA 1530. Uh, I thought it represented pretty good value for money. Um, and what I initially did was test it at home. Um, but unfortunately, that wasn't really very revealing because comparing an E-field antenna in a noisy environment against an H-field antenna, um, one isn't really a very sort of fair comparison. Um, so what I did was take it out on, on the expeditions and it really came alive. I was um, so impressed with its performance when you consider how compact it is, uh, the physical length of the actual radiating element um, um, you've seen some of the reception videos on my channel probably, but you know, low power South American stations, radio RB2, radio Vos Missionaria, radio Paracida, Bangladesh Betar, like a local AM, Zambia, NBC, Radio 1, um, some nice DX on long wave. Um, incredible really. Um, for again, such a, a kind of compact antenna. And the, the way I'm, I was using it, or the way I'm still using it is, I built a kind of homebrew battery pack using AA batteries, which literally cost pence, uh, and a connector. Um, and so I have this kind of completely portable DXing solution that lives in my car in a small flight case with uh, either the Eaton satellite or Sony ICF SW55. Brilliant antenna. Um, I was so impressed with it that I actually wrote an article the uh, SWL in post about it, about the antenna, about its performance, why I bought it, etc. And I got a lot of feedback from that article. Um, and as it happens, uh, Dennis Falter Benito contacted me and asked if he could republish the article on the Benito uh, kind of newsroom website page. And of course, I said that I was glad, happy for him to do that. So he did that. But he also said that he would be interested in sending me some of their antenna products for me to test, um, upload reception videos, of course, as I always do, and write some reviews. And so I agreed to do that. Um, it's a great opportunity for me to try some other antennas. Um, and hopefully um, it will generate you know, additional interest in Benito's um, products. Um, and I'm just sort of thinking back to some of the other kit that I've tested, um, the uh, PL310ET, um, Eaton Satellite, even the, the, well, the Benito Bonnie Whip. Um, I've had messages from various kind of subscribers and um, watchers of my channel to say that, you know, they've been impressed and they've ordered, you know, um, those items. So it's kind of a win-win situation. Um, so what happened was I got this box through the post um, a couple of days ago um, and I'll just share with you um, the antenna that was sent. Um, it's the Megactiv MA305 which is similar to the um, Bonnie Whip. Um, second, third order intercept points um, on this antenna, uh, 50 and 30, well, plus 50, plus 30 uh, dBMs. Um, obviously it's an E-field antenna. Um, power consumption of around 10 milliamps, uh, 40 milliamps maximum. Um, but what's really interesting is, is the operating voltage, it's five to 15 volts. So effectively you can uh, operate this antenna it's got like a dual power kind of junction box whereby you can um, plug an analog power supply into it in the same way that you can with the uh, Bonnie Whip. Um, but because it will operate at five volts and you'll still get the same excellent performance, you can actually now power it using um, a USB power bank. And the uh, Mega Active MA305 comes complete with uh, a USB power bank. And here it is. And so there you go and so effectively you can 
with the supplied cable, you uh, you can obviously charge a power bank from the mains using a standard connector. I've got a couple of these lying around. Um, and if I take the sort of dual power junction box, here it is. You can see that there's a socket for a mains power supply and a socket for USB. And so literally, with the supplied cable, there you have it. So it's simply a case of taking the USB power bank, charging it up, taking all this out, uh, and away you go. Uh, this is a fantastic idea. Um, and one of the reasons I say that is because when I'm out DXing, I quite often carry a, a laptop. That's it. <laughs> Um, and I use a laptop as additional power for my iPhone 7 that I'm now using uh, because when you're recording videos at 60 frames per second in HD and it's dark and therefore you've got the flash uh, running uh, you can drain the power pretty quickly um, and so you know the, my kind of philosophy on uh, making sure that I do have enough power to uh, keep DXing for several hours is basically is completely mirrored by the design that Bonito have come up with this with here. Um, there we go. So there you go. Nine kilohertz to three hundred megahertz. Interestingly, the radiating element is a bit bigger. It's about well, it's, I think it's more. It's twice as long uh, as the radiating element with the Bonito Bonnie Whip. But I think. Because these are kind of interchangeable, there's scope here um, for a bit of an experiment. So uh, I've been thinking about using a much longer uh, radiating element um, with the Bonnie Whip, um, but nevertheless, there you go. So this is uh, what Bonito delivered to me. Um, they're actually sending me some H155 coax um, and there's an article on the website that explains um, why and how you achieve better signal to noise um, than using the kind of standard coax that I buy uh, from Maplin um, but there you go so um, a great uh, opportunity for me to um, test this uh, I guess, um, well, I guess it's a newer, a newer design than the um, Bonnie Whip, um, but the idea of um, USB power, there you go, um, yeah, kind of does really synchronise with how I um, operate my equipment, and uh, what a great idea, and it's interesting actually because the power supply for my Wellbrook. Um, LA 1530 failed after about a year. Uh, I tried to get hold of an equivalent um, unit. And I couldn't find one anywhere. In the end, I phoned up uh, Wellbrook and um, they have a few hundred in stock, but they can't get any more. I think there's some EU legislation that's kind of, uh, for some reason, is banning these power supplies because of the high voltages or something internally. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, but basically, they've got a, a stock of a I think he said he's got a couple of hundred left. Um, he sold me two. Um, and so, you know, beyond that, um, it's a bit difficult. Now, I went to Maplin and bought the equivalent power supply from Maplin pretty cheaply, 15 quid. But guess what? When I switched it on, it generated so much noise that, you know, it literally obliterated the uh, spectrum on my uh, ELAD. So it was completely unusable. I had to take it back. Um, so Benito, having developed this antenna to run uh, perfectly well uh, on USB, uh, I think it's a brilliant idea. And I'm very much looking forward to uh, taking it out on the expeditions and uh, seeing what it's uh, capable of. Um, but if it's anything like the Bonnie Whip, which I've already conducted many tests on and, and you know, you've seen some of the reception videos, uh, I'm sure that it'll perform very well. So that's my short introduction to the mega active ma305 usb powered active antenna um 
I will be taking it out um, pretty soon, um, um, trying it with um, kind of various portables um, and uploading the reception videos. And, and so it'll be very interesting to uh, to see what the results are. Um, I shall write at least a couple of articles for the SW, uh, SW Welling Post um, just to basically, you know, explain um, how I've used it uh, and what my thoughts are in terms of uh, how sensitive it is. So uh, should be interesting. Anyway, uh, I thought I'd share that with you. Um, thanks for watching.